In this video, I want to quickly cover nuclear tech mod updates and changes from the past 3 weeks. The video is divided into these 5 main categories and there are individual video chapters in the description if you want to review something over again. And before I begin this, I want to say a big thanks to all of the amazing members over at my discord community and also in the nuclear tech mod discord for all of the support that you guys give me. I really am grateful to you guys. So yeah, without any further ado, let's get straight into this video. Let's start this video with the large radar, a multi-block machine which is a much bigger variant of the smaller radar that we had before. It looks extremely cool and I think is a must for every military base that you are gonna make in this mod. Now you can supply it power from external cables or from the inside using self-charging batteries and once activated it's gonna look something like this. Now not only does it look cool, it's much bigger but it also has a much larger scanning area. So as you can see the power consumption for both of these radar is same like 10,000 HE per second and here's the crafting recipe for the large radar that we have here. So that's the large radar and the smaller radar is right here. So this is the crafting recipe, it was snuffed a little bit. So as you can see the small radar has a scanning area of 1000 blocks, the large radar on the other hand has a scanning area of a total 3000 blocks. So much larger area and so you can attack a much larger area once it is linked to any missile terminal. Now I'm quickly going to scan this area here in its map view so that we can start launching missiles. Now let's come to the satellite radar relay. It is used to link the orbital death ray to any radar. So I'm gonna set both of these using a satellite linker, then get the orbital death ray into orbit. And once it is in orbit, I'm gonna place the satellite radar relay in the radar GUI. Once it is in, we can use any coordinate. So here we have a nuclear power plant. I am gonna call down an orbital strike by pressing the one key on the numpad. And as soon as we do that, there goes. So that's how you can link orbital death rays now to radars as well, which is a pretty cool addition. And uh, yeah, let's do this once again, cause it's fun to, why not? Here we go. So yeah, that's the satellite radar relay used to link the orbital linker to any radar. Let's come to custom missiles and nuclear bombs now. Many of you had issues by or basically with launching custom missiles using the radar. So here's how you do it. Place any custom missile, use the radar linker to link the launch station. And then, this is important, take any target designator, set it to any coordinate and then place it because it is necessary. The missile is only going to go where you basically send it with the radar if you are launching it with the radar that is. So here I have launched a nuclear missile and here goes. Now if you might have noticed the fireball here is not very big and the crater that's formed is also very small. So nuclear explosions have now changed. They will basically spawn an entire area of cellophyte like this wherever the explosion affects them and uh, the cellophyte is like much darker in the middle it gets lighter as we go outside but all of it is completely cellophyte also nuclear bombs will now spawn their fireballs based on how powerful the explosion is so bigger nukes will have much bigger mushrooms and fireballs compared to smaller nukes and uh, yeah, this will work in every biome. So no matter in what biome you explode a nuclear bomb, this is the effect that it is going to have. It is going to override biomes basically and there is gonna be cellophyte everywhere. So yeah, that's nuclear bomb and the craters that they now form, pretty cool stuff. Next, we come to the stealth missile. Now the stealth missile is crafted using the following recipe. It's not like too expensive, but What's important here is that it can basically bypass any radar or CIWS target. So nothing can target it except for the force field. So I have placed a turret, as you saw, it already destroyed one missile before, but not the stealth missile. So the stealth missile went right through the turret and actually it also destroyed the turret and the building. All right, coming to the strand caster. Now this one is pretty cool cause it can basically mass produce all of the recipes. You have to install molds. I am gonna process the uranium recipe here. So I'm gonna install the ingots mold and the blocks mold. Now it requires water and it will produce low pressure steam. So here's the setup that I'm going with. And you don't really need that big of a cooling tower, but I'm gonna use it just in case. 
and here I am going to set up a crucible with filters for uranium, lead and stone which is the output for basically when you melt uranium. And if I speed this process up, as you can see the strand cluster will fill up with uranium and as soon as it is full we will see the crafting happen. So there goes. It automatically crafted a lot of uranium ingots from all of the uranium that we provided it. And you can also get the output from it like this. So yeah, automating it is pretty easy. Next up, we come to the combinator funnel, which is used to automatically craft two by two and three by three recipes. It doesn't take any power and for input and output, you will need the conveyor ejector and the conveyor inserter. It doesn't work directly with inventory. So you will need to use it with the basically conveyor recipes or the conveyor uh, things, the inserter and the ejector. But yeah, this is how you can automate it and directly craft blocks or ingots from it. Pipette can be used to basically get precise amount of liquid in them. So right clicking will increase their capacity, shift right clicking will decrease their capacity. So now this normal pipette will only hold 500 millibuckets, but it can't really hold the recipes which are corrosive. Boron pipette, however, can hold recipes which are corrosive and the laboratory grade pipette is like very small capacity, but it can hold very precise amounts of liquid in it. Tungsten bolts, on the other hand, or basically every bolt now, basically a single ingot will give you eight pieces of bolts. So bolts recipe is now much cheaper compared to before. And the same goes for dust because a single piece of powder will give eight boxes of dust, which then you can use in the cyclotron to get the stuff that you need. Coming to cyclotron, by the way, when you use the effectiveness upgrade, it will decrease the amount of coolant used by the cyclotron. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Next up, we come to the power generating machines and the solar tower boiler now has a cap like 10,000 millibuckets per tick, I guess, of steam it can produce. So it now has a power cap and uh, yeah, so that's the solar tower boiler. The Watts power plant, by the way, will now cool much faster and it will deplete fuels much faster. Its mud production has also been torn down. So point is you can make much, much larger Watts power plant now in order for them to be effective and produce more power. Then we come to the radiation powered engine. Now this one will produce 10 times more power than what it used to before. So you can have long lived nuclear waste in it and wait it for to be decayed and get some power out from it. So yeah, meteor swords by the way will now glow in the first person mode when you basically block like this. And yeah, they will have their glint, their respective colors whenever you are in the first person mode. And by also they are much bigger than they were before. So that's that. Gadget has now been visually overhauled as you can see it is much more cooler and when you are running the game on fast graphics the fast render then these wires will disappear for the sake of performance same goes for the solar rays when using the solar tower boiler the little pip squid as you can see has been visually overhauled and yeah it can zoom now has new sounds and a much cooler reload and equipping animation. The water tanks, the 256k tank and the biggest tank now will give a comparator output based on the amount of liquid that they have in them. Now, I don't know why you would use this for the biggest tank, but for the 256k tank, this is pretty handy. So as you can see, as the tank fills up with more and more water, the redstone signal goes up and we get more and more lamps lighting up. So you can make a visual system for the 256K tanks using this competitor thing right here. So yeah, that's that. For the tanks, every output that it has or every excess slot that it has can be used as a competitor output. Now, these are the things that were removed from the mod. The N45 naval mine was completely obliterated. Same goes for the old mining drill. Now we have the bigger one for the bedrock ores. The combustion generator has been replaced with the wood burning generator. I already covered that one. The watt score, the old one, has been completely gone. And the same goes for the big reactor or the large reactor parts. They are no longer there. And we come to the last one, which is the CMB furnace, which also is no longer available in this mod. Now, I know this video was a bit rushed, but yeah, I hope I covered everything that I wanted to. If you have any queries, please do let me know in the comment section below and I'll try to answer them. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, like it and also subscribe to the channel for more content, my guys. Peace out and I'll see you in the next one.